Hey everyone, so today we're going to talk about something that became very popular in the last few days, which is private GPT. So specifically, we want to talk about how one could deploy private GPT and even to begin with why someone would need that. So let's look at how you can do this even without any coding experience. So the easy way to understand private GPT is that it's a chat GPT with complete data control. And why would that be needed? So in case if your data is sensitive or if it is something that cannot leave your organization, or maybe you have privacy regulations in your area which does not let user data to be sent out of that country, or it contains some personal data like tax documents or other document which includes your personal sensitive data that you cannot send over through any chat application like ChatGPT. In those cases, you can benefit from private GPT. So a typical setup for that would be an enterprise where there is tremendous amounts of data, but it cannot leave premises because it contains a lot of intellectual property. Not just that, it might also be an organization like government organization which has a lot of confidential data and which cannot leave that organization. It could also be something along the lines of privacy focused user data which is heavily regulated for good reasons. So this is something that we have looked at previously where any chat with document or chat with PDF application how they operate. Uh, they start with taking any document and then they convert it into vectors or numbers and, and those vectors are saved in a database which is then searched through the queries. To make it easy for us to understand these systems, one could decouple them and look at document ingestion system and retrieval system as two separate flows where the document ingestion system as mentioned takes documents, it extracts text from it and then split that text into small chunks which is then converted into numbers or vectors using an embedding model and then those vectors or numbers are saved in a vector database. And similarly, the retrieval system also follows a pattern where instead of taking the document, it takes the question and it converts the question into embedding using a similar embedding model and then searches through the vector database to find the nearest neighbors and then provide those as relevant answers that goes to our generation API for completion of the answer. As you notice, there is a call to OpenAI made for embedding of the documents, as well as there's a call made for embeddings at the beginning of the retrieval flow. Also, we call OpenAI for a generation of the final response. So three of those calls and other aspect is the vector database. So in private GPT, embeddings are stored locally and we call these models locally on our server or computer. And then the database for saving vectors is also local. So none of the data leaves our premise and even the generation of the response happens with a locally stored model. So both of these flows happen completely local on your server or your computer. So if one were to look at the original repo of private GPT, it is quite popular, over 19,000 stars, and there's a lot of contributions and many activities happening. So the requirement for the setup and installation requires you to download these models on your computer and then run accordingly. So I thought, why not make it into an API which could be connected with any front end. So that's what I did. I took the original repo and then converted it into an API that could be called and that could be deployed as a backend and also a front end, which is quite basic, just a streamlit template. So there are two ways we'll talk about deploying private GPT. One is a very easy way, just one click. And the second is to deploy using our own server. So the easy method is basically clicking this link which will take you to a Railway-based deployment. Railway is a service similar to Render that we have used quite often, and it makes it easy for you to deploy any given template. 
So before you proceed further, I just wanted to inform you that I did run into many issues on railway. So it works a few times, but it also causes issues. Uh, so I would suggest perhaps to skip the portion of uh, railway deployment. You could certainly watch it and see and maybe test it out. And maybe it doesn't give any error on your end, but I did run into a few of those there is a similar way of deploying this app on render.com that's something we have been using in our videos so if you'd like for me to make a video on that i could do that if not the deployment on local machine or server is towards the end of this video so in this case you just need to hit deploy and then give it a name i'll call it private gpt web app and i'll make it a private repo as well as some of the environment variables are already filled in. You don't necessarily have to change this unless if you'd like to use a different model. So in that case, you could specify the model over here and the model path will be something that will be automatically filled in as well. Or if you like, you could fill this out. So basically you just need to ch change the model type and everything else should be fine. And then you hit deploy. And what's going to happen is it will create a project for you on Railway and it goes through a series of steps where it's going to run the scripts that's available for it to start deployment and build the application for you. And it takes about, I would say, around eight or 10 minutes or so to build the application, make the links available for you, then you can run the application. One thing I would like to mention is that the free instance, which has been used right now, is probably going to cause some failures. It's not the most reliable. If you do plan to use private GPT on Railway, it's highly recommended to use one of their paid plans, which basically charges you per minute of usage, if I'm not wrong. And when you do that, it will give you about eight gig of memory, which is going to be needed for this application. So in free mode, most likely it's going to cause failure in terms of running. So you might be thinking, why deploy private GPT on cloud? So even in this case, you still have full control over your data as it's embedded as well as stored within this application. And if you like, you could just delete the application and that takes care of deleting your data. So the deployment on Streamly does take some time. And once that is completed, it will show a green check mark and that everything is working fine. If you click that, you'll see this Streamlit application where you can upload your document as well as retrieve information from previously uploaded documents. And we'll look at functioning of that in a few minutes. So now we're going to look at something that could be locally deployed on our computer or server. And that's where we go back to the repo discussed before. So the way we could deploy the private GPT app, and again, just to distinguish private GPT original repo can help you run it on terminal. Whereas the app that we're looking at will be something that you could use as a backend API, or you could use as a full stack app for any of your data. So in this case, we will first take the repo link and within our terminal, we'll go to projects directory and git clone the repo. And once that's done, we'll cd into the repo and we'll open that in VS code. And within VS code, I want to look through readme for instructions. So first thing is to create a virtual environment. That's what I did. And I called it private GPT. And next is to have a environment file. So there is an example.env file. We're going to just take that over and then create a new file called .env and just paste everything in that file. As you notice, there is no API key in this case. It's all happening locally. So that's nice. And next step is to install all the requirements. So this command can help you with that. So that's what we're going to do. So I had ran some of these before. So it's going to be mostly satisfied and it's completed. It does take a few minutes. There is a lot of dependencies. So once that happens, now there are two parts to this application. One is the backend API and the other is the, the front end. So we'll run both separately in two bash terminals. So first command builds the fast API backend and it's, you know, you can test it out by opening in the browser and you'll see it 
takes a few seconds and what's happening is I wrote a script to download all the models for you so you don't have to do it manually and this does take a, a few seconds as you, you notice and once the model downloads you'll see that application started complete message is displayed that means that our backend is ready we can test it out um, at the link that was open before so now it says okay the apis are now ready for your embeds and queries great second step is for us to deploy our front end if we would like to test it out in terms of connectivity to the back end as well as how the application works so i'm going to run this uh, streamlit so this is quite fast compared to the backend API. There is not a whole lot happening except that it's building the Streamlit application. And once that builds, you'll see this private GPT app. You have an option to upload any documents. So in this case, we will upload Constitution of the United States. And when you hit embed, you'll notice that it's gonna run through the backend and it's going to start basically doing the the splitting and then chunking of the document as well as embedding that so there will be a few of these messages that you'll you'll notice uh, throughout now it takes again a few seconds for this to complete and when that happens you'll see a message which says document embedded successfully so this step is relatively quick compared to the next step which is querying our data and you'll notice that the document that was uploaded is now available in the drop down list and we can search so i'm going to ask what does article one say and once you hit retrieve now it's going to perform a few actions in the background so this step does take some time to query and there are some discussions on how to make this faster and we'll talk about that in our next few videos there are also other repos that do a similar task of building a, a chat with your docs application locally and perform the embeddings as well as querying locally so we'll look at that in the next few videos so it gives an answer saying what does article one say as well as some references and if we were to look in our streamlit app we can see the response as well as the documents provided or the source documents those are provided so that brings us to our last point which is if you are an organization and would like to build an application similar to private GPT that you have complete control over data please do let me know we'll be happy to discuss that with you and we can make custom applications along those lines also do share with someone who might be looking for a similar application with that thank you so much for following along and please reach out if you have any questions